and connect to the churches. And so um, I've been involved in starting nonprofit organizations, Impacting Hearts and Emerging Light. What we do is we create our youth clubs for foster kids in the foster care system. Los Angeles County right now is the largest foster care system in the country. Uh, or knowing that's a similar size, the state of Texas. Um, and these nonprofit organizations, what they do is they connect and they have all these young adult volunteers that they work with. And then I connected them to various um, offices of the Child Protect Services. And now we have over five different locations in five different churches. So what happens, the churches who are too small to have youth ministry, we bring in outside volunteers and overnight they have a built-in youth ministry. That can be young people from church and foster kids coming together. And the volunteers come from outside. And we put that in the church's program and we have it in five different churches in different parts of LA County and that draws over 200 foster kids on a weekly basis. Because we let young people lead the, lead the way, let young people do it in a way that makes sense to them. Too often, I think our churches do not take the time to let young people lead. And we ask young people to do things in a way that's comfortable for older members. And if we're not careful, that can give message to younger people their older Presbyterians are only worried about money. And so the idea that whatever has the money has the power. And that's, that will leave a young people in the church where they don't trust the leadership and they'll walk away. But if we can say, okay, if we, we will just honor any faith attempt, and whether they will succeed or not, it's not an issue. Whether they can prove to us it's a good idea or not, it's not an issue. But if a young person in the church is wanting to step up, then we are willing to go and support them. I think there's so much in the churches that will help our churches grow and be completely different. Because I think we have to change the mindset and the message that we give to our young people. And especially in immigrant churches, still there is an assumption by many of the young people that old cultural ways still dominate. And while that might, while parents and all the members are remembering the cultural uh, ways of doing things, but I'm of a true belief that if we help young people be able to express things in a way that all the members understand. They will have support. And this gap is more of communication and expectation gap than the real gap of not, not wanting young people in the church. And so I really am hopeful that we can create more opportunities where young people can come and talk and say, what gives me great joy to do? What am I willing to experiment with? Where am I willing to try things? And then we find the rest of the way to go, okay, how can we support you? And sometimes support for a group of young people in one particular church might come from another language ethnic church. Maybe a Chinese church, young people are thinking of something, and maybe support could come from a Thai church or Indonesian church, you know, or a Burmese church or any other, and then we'll start getting them to work together. And I think that is often the thing that we're not thinking about. And I think that's the role that Presbyterians can play in helping making those connections and encouraging young people to come and to try those things together. So I think the, the really the, the ideas that young people have, I think young people do have the ideas of what can work because they know what they will go to themselves. And I don't think we're listening to them enough. And I think we need to find ways where young people can say, I'm willing to go to these kind of things. And I think that could be the starting point where we'll say, okay, how can we help you make that happen so that you can be excited about it because once they're excited about it, we are certain some of their friends will be excited about that too. And then once we connect with them, then I think that's where we can see how they are talking about their faith journeys and then be in the process of talking about that.
because otherwise I think we're going to try to hang on to the old churches that are not going to be effective in the long run. But I think the hope is in the young people, and I think if we are serious, we've got the money toward it, and I think we really have to create ways of share, uh, sharing with them that we trust them. So, I hope that makes sense. Thank you. PMA uh, in GA office, we are uh, set up these coming four years, that in uh, 2013 to 2016, uh, we have five goals. Um, number one is 101. Number, number fifth uh, is young adults. So you know, young adults ministry is the most emphasized uh, ministry in these coming years. So uh, the first year, what they set up um, for our young adult ministry is listen, listen. So um, we want to develop a lot of uh, occasion for us to listen from young adults what they are think, what they are thinking, what it will work. Okay. So right now, we we I, I would like you to. Uh, divide into four groups, all right? So young adult, you have a group, and pastor a group, and the EM pastor a group to share uh, the question we have uh, gave in the invitation. And then after 30 minutes, we will come back to share each, each other for what your group thinking about how we can support our young adult, what they want to do. 